Okay, so you're fascinated by this ability to build apps with AI, and maybe you've used Replit, Lovable, or Bolt in order to build your first demo project. And it worked out really well, but when you started to add in features, it started to fall apart a bit. You started to get lots of errors, your database was all over the place, your components were mismatched, and it just wasn't working out for you. Don't worry, I've got your back. This is something that happens to a lot of beginners when they start to build out apps. There's a lot of little things you can do in advance that really make this a much smoother process. This is not an extensive three month course. You can do all of this in a 15 minute process. I'm going to introduce you to three app development experts. Number one, I'm going to introduce you to the product manager AI. He's going to create a set of documentation that's going to have your user personas, your business pitch, and the general business requirements of your application. Number two, we're going to talk to an AI UI and UX expert who's going to take us through different designs for our application and some considerations about how we should design for our personas. And number three, we're going to talk to a software architect who's going to take all those previous documents and design out some API routes, root structure, and some general best practice for how we're going to develop our app. We're going to take all of those documents produced by the experts together, and we're going to feed them into Cursor AI to start a project in the right way. I've been developing apps for about 20 years and I've been developing with AI for the last two years. And this process really helps me in getting a project straight and avoiding lots of problems down the line. And the great thing is you don't have to do anything. You're just gonna drop in a few prompts and these AI experts are going to ask you the questions in order to pull the documentation together. Number one, you're gonna get educated on the best practice for developing modern applications. Number two, you're gonna get a set of documentation that's gonna springboard your project and get it up and running and make sure that you don't run into dead ends later on. If you like this kind of content, check out switchdimension.com. I've got a course and community where I help people to build applications with AI. So in the description, I'm gonna share these resources with you that's gonna help you step through the implementation of this process. And it's really straightforward. We've also got a rules document in there teaching you about how to use rules with AI that'll work for Cursor or Windsurf or any other tool that you like to use. Okay, so in this case, we're going to use this model, the O3 Mini High. I tested DeepSeek, Claude, and a few others, and I found that O3 just is just that little bit better and has a better output than the others. But to be honest, it's not a huge amount. So if you want to use any free model or deep seek, it's gonna work just as well. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with our product requirements document. So we're gonna work with an expert product manager to create your requirements. So we're gonna go and copy in this first prompt and then I'm going to leave search enabled and then we've got our context here. It says you're an expert product manager and you're going to ask questions. It's going to output a markdown file based on those questions. And then it's going to produce an elevator pitch. Who is this app for? Functional requirements, user stories, and uh, some user interface information. So that's what we're going to get from our product requirements document. So I'm just going to hit return here. Okay, so it says, could you please explain the project idea, who's the app for, the functional requirements, user stories, etc. I have the answers already prepared because I did this earlier. So this is a dictation result of what I inputted to the model for the first time. So we're just going to dump it in there. And essentially what it's giving is the description of an application that we build in the Switch Dimension Build with AI course. If you're interested in that kind of thing and you like building stuff with AI, this is just about to go live. So what we're gonna do is describe the app that we want to build. I come up with ideas when I'm reading articles or I'm doing my research, and I just want to be able to create quick Twitter posts or LinkedIn posts around that. So I'll just put in my main thoughts of what I've researched and what I've learned, and then use AI to help structure that for each one of the platforms that I would post on, whether that's LinkedIn, Twitter, Blue Sky, etc. So that's the purpose of the application. And I detail who this is focused at, like entrepreneurs and builders, etc. So I'm going to hit return here and feed that back into the model. Now you can get the full prompt and see it here on the right hand side. You can pause the video or you can see it in the description. So we have the model here coming up with a response. 
and what it's giving me back is a elevator pitch. So Levercast is a web application designed for busy entrepreneurs to effortlessly capture, format, and share their content ideas across multiple social media platforms. And it gives the rest of the pitch there. I won't step into every single process. You're going to be, you'll be doing this yourself, or you can see the full output there uh, later on. Now, the next thing we want to do is skip down here, and then we want to work with a UI designer to figure out how we should approach the design of the application. So we're going to take this prompt here, we're going to copy this, and then we're going to paste this in here. And basically, it's giving the prompt now to switch it up to be a UX designer. So it's asking me for some clarification about my user persona. Is the primary target a busy entrepreneur? Or are we aiming this at creative content creators? And then I'm going to pump in my response to this. So it's giving me options in terms of my layout structure, uh, alternate options around a bold, vibrant UI with a different type of card based layout. And then we've got a class board, classic dashboard UI. So this is really useful because normally when I'm designing an application and I go into Figma or something like that, I kind of see already what that application is going to look like in my mind from my experience and how I design. But using these prompts to give us variations of what we might design, it gives you inspiration for alternative flows and alternative ways that you might not have thought about. This is kind of a new approach where because we're using a generative model, we can get it to come up with multiple different approaches based on our persona, and then we can pick and choose the elements that we like best. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in my response. So it asked me about the user persona details. So I'm just going to copy that in, paste it in here. So I'm saying, my focus is, you know, primarily going to be these entrepreneurs, the selling point of the app is X, Y, and Z, and then I'm going to hit return and then see what kind of response the model comes back with. So now it's giving me its final recommendations based on the different options. And then I would choose, you know, which option I preferred most, probably going to go with option one, I think of the three options. So it's finalizing our document and here we go. It's pumping out the final user interface document. It's giving us a layout structure, the core components, interaction patterns about how everything move, how we move within the application, design elements like a color scheme. It's recommending a dark mode with charcoal gray background and some accent colors like teal or electric blue. Um, mobile app, desktop considerations, typography, accessibility. So we're going to be able to use this now to move to our next stage, which is the software architect. And there's a sample output here as well that you can take a look through. So now we have our initial prompt for the software architect. So we're going to uh, copy this. We can pop over here and we're just going to paste this in. Now there's two approaches you can take as you make your way through here. You could save each one of those documents down as markdown files as you progress. Uh, you could create a brand new uh, chat window and then paste in the two previous documents and then offer in your next expert prompt. But it seems to work fine if you do them one by one by one in the same chat. But if you really want to separate the model in terms of this is a product manager, this is a UX designer, this is a software architect, you might, you know, get it to ignore previous instructions or jump to a next model, but I don't think it really matters that much. Okay. Okay, so before I generate the software requirements, could you please share your existing skill set? So this is a question that's important because if you're a developer or a designer, you might have specific skill sets around a language you like to work on, whether it's like Python or Java or JavaScript and you might have certain frameworks you like to work on. So I'm going to indicate to it what mine are. Now, the first time you do this, I would basically hold back your opinion and I would ask the model to just make its best recommendations because you want to just get a feel for what it feels is the best step forward, what frameworks, what tools, what language because you don't want to be too prescriptive. If I jump in there and say, this is exactly how I want to build it, it's going to agree with me. And it's going to say, yes, you should use Next.js and you should use X, Y, and Z. You should use TypeScript, et cetera, because that's what I'm prescribing and I'm guiding the model. But the first time you do this, I get it to just prescribe to you what it thinks is the best approach. 
There was a really interesting study done recently in uh, emergency rooms with doctors. So they had two cohorts of doctors. One doctor basically would look at the patient and do triage and say, hmm, I think the problem here is they have X, Y, and Z. And they would ask the model then, give me treatments for this particular disease or problem this patient was having. So the second cohort basically just inputted the symptoms that they saw and then asked the model to give them their recommendation or their assumption about what was wrong. So the second cohort, the ones that just put in the symptoms, scored way higher in accuracy than the humans who were prescribing what they thought was the problem. And this isn't a fault of any doctor. It's just the fact that a lot of these models have access to a huge corpus of information and they're able to do pattern matching across symptoms and different things like that. So again, what I'd encourage you to do as you work with AI is for your first prompt or the first time you work with it, you know, stand back, don't be too prescriptive and ask it as if it's the professional to see what it comes back with. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to say, give me your recommendations and I'm going to hit return. And so our final document is our software requirement specification. So it's basically giving us a background for the system design. It's giving us an architecture pattern about how we should approach this, what kind of client side state management we use. We should use context API or Redux with React. Um, it's giving us a general data flow. We should send data to the back end. We should process in a particular way. Our technical stack, it's saying let's use React, use state management. We're going to use Redux, Tailwind CSS for our styling. Then it's actually giving us some route designs for our API endpoints. And this one is really important to actually get set up as a starting point. You'll see in previous videos, what I talk about is going into design mode for as long as possible, designing the front end of your application. The reason being is that we can actually make a lot of mistakes on the front end to understand how everything connects together, how everything is going to map in terms of components, where the URL structure, the address structure is going to be before we start to get it to create databases and APIs and everything else, because they're much harder to change and migrate after the fact. So remember to go into design mode. I have a previous video on that I'll have a link for as long as you possibly can and then you know start to plot out your route design your API design and then even your entity relationship design as well and what I would do here is it's given us a basic ERD relationship I would actually go and get it to expand upon that and give me an ERD diagram to add in here as well so what I do then is I would take all of these documents that we have created and take it to your favorite AI development IDE like Cursor, Windsurf, or GitHub Copilot. Now, if you're interested, what I've also done is I've done a comparison test for three models. We compared DeepSeek R1, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and O3 Mini. So I realized Claude 3.5 Sonnet is a different style of model than DeepSeek R1 and O3. They're like chain of thought based models. Uh, but I found that the comparison was worth doing. I, and there's not a huge difference between each model. They both gave pretty much the same output with maybe a slight increase in quality and some better questions asked from the O1 and O3 models. So the next thing I do is once I have my project set up in Cursor AI, in this case, I have created a documentation folder and I've got my product requirements, project management, my software specifications, my UX design, all as markdown files here. I'll bring them in as context into my chat or my composer agent when I kick off the project. I'll say, okay, I'll say something like, please reference this documentation as we proceed with the project. Let's start with the software specifications guidelines and help me scaffold out the basis of our application and the best practice for how this next JS app should be structured. So the premise of the application that we're going to build in the uh, Build with AI course, it's a full Next.js application. We're going to build from scratch using AI and it allows you to dump all your thoughts. Like you might decide, uh, I want to 
create an article around X, Y, and Z, or you have a thought about a particular um, framework you're working on or something like that, you can either put it in using audio or you can write it in, and then you'll be able to choose different templates based on how you want to put out that. Is it an event post? Is it just a general thought leadership post? And then you can syndicate it across all your different platforms. And we're going to be using AI, run a system prompt and get back all the content based on exactly how you wanted it formatted. We're not going to use generic templates here. It's going to be something specific to how you like to write. And we can see all our recent posts and we can decide which ones we want to publish or just keep in draft, build out templates and change our settings, etc., and even offer uh, the payment tiers to get signed up. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, take a look at the community launching now in the next couple of days.